Today, I want to share with you five ways to prevent breast cancer. First, it's very important that we focus on healing and wellness and optimization and the capacity for our own healing, self-healing capacity within our body. Let's focus on that versus a lot of the fear, the angst, and the concern that a lot of us have if you feel a lump, a bump, or a mass, or maybe have a family history. I work specifically with a lot of breast cancer patients and an underlying theme of concern and fear is very normal, very traditional, but it also can cause undue stress. So today I wanna to share with you these five tips that will help you harness your own natural power and give you the assorted resources to help you live your healthiest life as well as address cancer prevention and to keep your breast cells as healthy as they can be. So number one, my most important tip is to practice self-care and advocacy. So I'm gonna, this, this is kind of a two-parter. So self-care is really doing everything in this list and exercising and doing things that are taking care of yourself. One of the things I'm gonna talk about today is the role that the lack of self-care plays actually on your breast health. So there's some emotional connections, but self-care involves making healthcare and prioritizing your wellness every day, making it a priority, putting yourself first in many cases and not necessarily taking a backseat and, and taking care of everybody else and neglecting yourself and also advocating for your health and wellness with your clinician, with your OBGYN, with your breast health expert, as well as seeking resources that might not necessarily be mainstream or conventional, but we know are supportive of breast health. For instance, utilizing certain techniques that promote your lymphatic system, as well as taking and consuming supplements and oils topically to support your breast health. And most importantly, practicing or conducting self breast exams. I am going to tell you a quick story about a call I had yesterday with one of my patients. I do a lot of virtual uh, appointments. And one of my patients told me that she was absolutely frightened to touch her breast tissue because she didn't want to find anything. And that fear is a driver and a blocker. It's, it's literally blocking her capacity to be her best and most optimized self. It also is blocking her self-care because we need to feel what's going on and we need to get connected to our body. Self-care is going to be the way through the fear, the angst, and the concern that you might have around annual screenings and monthly, weekly, daily breast exams. And I say daily, weekly, and monthly breast exams because it's not just a month we celebrate breast health awareness. It's not necessarily every month or every week that you want to be examining your breast tissue. Every day, you wanna do a quick assessment of your breast health and target underneath your lymph nodes, feel the side of your breast, feel in between your breasts, because every day, and especially if you're cycling certain periods of the month, your breast cells are going to be different and they're going to change. So if you only do a breast exam on the first day of the month, well, that might not be a point where you can feel certain uh, tissue in your breast because you might be getting ready to have a cycle or maybe you're mid cycle. So it's very important that we practice self-care as well as advocate for yourself. If you have a concern, don't delay. If you have a clinician that won't perform a test or is telling you to do X, Y, and Z, and it doesn't sit well with you, you can find another one. So I want to really encourage you to, to harness your own empowerment for yourself and advocate. If you are concerned about anything, don't delay. Time is critical. And it also can calm your concerns by identifying via diagnostics if there's anything that should be of concern. Number two is practice as healthy of a lifestyle as you can. Lifestyle is really a critical piece to cancer prevention, especially when we know epigenetics, our environment that in influences our genes, that can be the point where either you are minimizing your cancer risk or you're turning on genes that can then 
uh, influence cancer development or progression of cancer cells. So harnessing a good healthy lifestyle where you're reducing stress, you're eating clean foods, you're exercising, and you're doing all of the things that are necessary for your optimal wellness, but also are going to be supportive of enhancing your breast health. The lifestyle component here also includes eliminating assorted estrogenic enhancing items that are in your life. So for instance, alcohol and caffeine are not pro breast health. I know that's a big subject for folks. I always recommend moving from coffee to green tea. And then also limiting the enhancement of, or limiting your consumption of estrogenic foods like non-organic, non-grass-fed chicken or meat, as well as eliminating things that might be in your environment. Now, number three, this is a really, really critical factor. And I delve deeply into this with a lot of my breast cancer patients, as well as patients that might be dealing with denser fibrotic breast cells or have a condition or staging of, of fibrosis within their breasts. Our relationship with ourself and others close to us, our parents, our partners, and our children can actually influence the state of our breast health. And I dig into this in one of the multiple modules in my breast health course. I have created a multi-module extensive breast health focus course. It's called the ultimate guide to breast, optimal breast health. And it, in one of the modules, I dig into our emotional state and how we have one side, the left versus the right side and how that affects our relationships. The relationship, the influence with our fathers or our, the male in our life, as well as the influence of our females in our lives can affect certain sides of the breast tissue. So that is really important as well as the relationship you have with yourself. Again, going back to my number one tip here is to practice self-care. And that's really critical because a lot of times the emotions of let's say the left breast, where it might be more enlarged, might be denser or problematic where we might see calcifications or fibroids that comes to back to the emotions where a lot of women are neglecting themselves and not putting themselves first in terms of healthcare. Now, number four, you're in luck here at organics, and it is reaching for powerful supplementation that can enhance your immune system, modulates your immune system, supports the bolstering of your immune health, as well as bolstering of your cells like vitamin D3, as well as tapping into assorted adaptogens and functional mushrooms. So a trio of resources here that I love to recommend for women. I love 7M Plus because of the assorted functional mushrooms that are highly antioxidant dense, as well as have extensive research in the assorted cancer cell apoptosis that can occur with reishi and the influence of, of mataki. And even women with tamoxifen, we find that reishi specifically has been found to make the tamoxifen post-cancer. Uh, and that's that interim where we're trying to keep you away from a, another diagnosis of cancer. Tamoxifen, tamoxifen is more effective when you take reishi. Now, another supplement that I love to recommend is magnesium, magnesium seven particularly because a lot of women will have a diagnosis of a calcification. And that simply means there is bone matter in the vascular channel of your breast cells. And that tends to trigger a response within your breast tissue. The breast cells themselves will change. That calcification tends to be a precursory state that is going to be a watch and see for a lot of women there are ways to reduce calcifications. I go into that further in my course, but knowing that magnesium is one of the most powerful calcium blockers in our vascular channel, you can tap into the power of magnesium to promote the restoration of good, healthy breast cells, as well as prevent cancer, as well as prevent the actual calcification of that tissue. So that's really important to take advantage of. And then I also love Tumeric 3D. This is a very powerful resource that we have here that you can tap into the antioxidant as well as the lymphatic promotive power of turmeric. And frankincense is an awesome resource 
We've seen a lot of research where frankincense oil can create cell apoptosis. And then a bonus is our joint and muscle care. This is a very, very powerful resource that contains the frankincense. So I'm really excited to share it. Those are four supplements that I recommend highly for any woman who is looking to support their breast cells and be in a more strategic preventative way. But also number five, my last and final tip is to eliminate environmental factors that can contribute to cancer cell development. One of the biggest offenders for breast cells or the change of breast cell tissue are going to be estrogens. And there are things, estrogen types called xenoestrogens. These are foreign estrogens. We're going to find these very prolific in a lot of the chemical products that are in our cleaning, you know, cleaning and household goods. So inside the house, make sure you eliminate a lot of the Clorox and a lot of the really offensive um, perfume dense uh, products that you might be using to clean, you know, throw away your Glade plugins because those are just spewing a lot of xenoestrogens into your air and are actually causing more burden for your body to eliminate the, those estrogens. And that also, those excess estrogens change the density and change the tissue of your breast cells. The other thing I'm really, really a big proponent of is getting rid of any of the Roundup or what we call the Monsanto products. These are going to be pesticides, herbicides, insecticides that you might be spraying in your backyard. Sometimes that leaches into your pools, or even we see traces of that in our water, which leads me to recommend filtering your water using a really good filtration process that can eliminate out a lot of those toxins, chloramines, fluoride, as well as things like statins. We see statins and birth control in drinking water. So being aware of our environment is also going to put less strain and burden on your body. And I'll tell you a big, big tip here. One of the most um, offensive environmental factors is using deodorants and perspirants underneath your arms. That actually can be really, really overwhelming to your system in that an antiperspirant shrinks your lymph nodes. And we want our lymphatic system to be clearing our breast cells and clearing out and eliminating cancer cells, which is one of its functions. The other function is the support of our immune system. So eliminating those are going to be highly impactful in your prevention of breast cancer and helping you optimize your wellness overall. So I hope you take these tips every day and every month and we look at really, really fortifying your system throughout the year in helping prevent breast cancer, as well as any other inflammatory uh, diseases and disorders with these five tips.